vulnerable because it is taking a risk. If you're doing something that nobody else is doing, then there's no way to know if it's going to be successful, really. Ah, so, so it's the unknown. Well, uh, to them, it's like we've seen this kind of action be successful for other companies before, maybe not in your industry, but we're taking the stuff that we learned from other industries, from other experiences along the way, and we know that this will make you stand out more. Yeah. And if you take these steps, it will make you more successful. If you do this creative, it'll make you stand out more memorable. Yeah. On today's episode of The Claw, I speak with Craig Slyke. He is our Director of Creative Strategy. And we talk about all of the creative stuff that agencies and firms want to do for you. But what's the point? What is the ROI of creativity? What are the things you should be looking for? And what are the things that you should avoid? And how do you know that you're working with a firm that has your best interest in line as it relates to the creative process? Tune in and learn more. Welcome to The Claw. Today, my guest is Craig Slyke. He is the, you know, I've realized that everybody in the company other than Cynthia has a hard name. Everybody has a hard name? I think so. Mendoza's not a hard name. Mendoza, you, but you have to know how to say it. You have to say Mendoza. Mendoza. So today I have Craig Slyke. He is the Director of Creative Strategy for Liger Partners so on The Claw. <laughs> Well, it's like, you know, I think I was like, first met, like I was like, like, is it like this? Yeah, no, it? but I thought it was like psyche. Oh, or, well, yeah, yeah. You know. But now you know. I do. I mean, it's not like it's hard to pronounce. It's I like do. an S in front of it. It's like. There you go. That's right. Well, I had Courtney on and her, she's oh, Courtney Sinus, sinus with yeah. the, you know, the P uh, and then there's Holtzclaw. Yeah. Not so easy. Yeah, yeah, there's a Z in there, isn't there? There's an L, a T, a Z, a C, and an L. Because my family was too poor to buy vowels. <laughs> So we, we got over here and it's like, yeah, you can't afford any vowels. So I, Eric, just get can I buy a vowel Holtzclaw? That's right, exactly. <laughs> so Craig is responsible for all of the creativity that we create here at Liger for our customers. And what's that's the thing, that's the hang up for a lot of companies is, you know, a firm like ours comes in and what, they're, what they want is they want us to come up with the big idea. Right, mm -hmm. like in, in fact, we'll get hired often by a company, and they say, "Oh, we want to look just like you. Like we love your creativity and your writing and the things that you do." And we're like, "Yeah, your product's not that interesting, but okay, we'll work on it, right?" Yeah. And so they say they want that creative slant, but then they don't really know how they're going to measure the ROI of having done it. So it's almost like they're asking for it, but at the same time, they're afraid of it. So. Yeah as the person who's responsible for creativity and having worked in this space for a long time, like what are some of the things that you know kind of point to the ROI, the return on investment of taking a creative approach? Well, making the mundane exciting is the best way to stand out in your industry. Like, especially if you're in one of those industries that just isn't ex as exciting to begin with. So if we're working with uh, law, I spend a lot of time in the legal industry and you're selling basically the same thing as everyone else, um, just your experience in yourself. So if you wanted to stand out, you gotta be that, like that purple cow, you know? And so the way to measure ROI is uh, for creativity is really getting creative in how you measure it. Because creativity isn't always throwing paint on a canvas. It's just thinking of another way to do something. It's being clever. So it's like you can take a look and see that changing up my creative has gotten me this many more eye, eyes on it in, uh, in, on, online, like quantitative and qualitative or um, when, say, you hand out a business card post-COVID <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and someone looks at your business card and says, okay, that, that is a really nice card, and they remember your face with that card, right. or you write on the card or something like that and give it to them. And then being memorable is part of being successful, and 
being creative can help you be memorable. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So making sure you stand out. Exactly. Yeah. And and what's interesting about that is, so often that is what companies ask us for. You know, they come in, they're like, oh, we want to, we really want to get new customers, and we want to attract people and things. And then as we start to get into the really creative side of it, they get they get uncomfortable. It yeah, makes them uncomfortable because it is taking a risk. If you're doing something that nobody else is doing then there's no way to know if it's going to be successful, really. Ah, so it's so, the unknown. Well, uh, to them, it's like we've seen this kind of action be successful for other companies before, maybe not in your industry, but we're taking the stuff that we learned from other industries, from other experiences along the way, and we know that this will make you stand out more. Yeah. And if you take these steps, it will make you more successful. If you do this creative, it'll make you stand out more memorable. Yeah, and so if, if the way I like to look at it, and you know, the tagline for the company is saving the world from boring, broken marketing. And so I had Cynthia on, who does director of our client services, and so she's she's the she takes care of the broken side, right? Like she yeah. makes sure marketing is not broken because <laughs> you're not delivering it consistently. If you're not doing the things you need to do, it's broken, and that's why it's not working. Yeah. You're on the boring side, so you're responsible for the boring piece. What are you saying? Meaning that making sure it's not boring. Oh, not boring. Not okay, boring. Okay, got it. Yes, we don't yeah. want it to be boring. No, no boring marketing. But when companies hear making marketing not boring, often they relate it to, you know, funny, right? Or off, you know, maybe a little bit uh, different. It, it's not always that. I mean, you can do no. things. Yeah, you can emotional. Yes, well, I'm act- I, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you asked or at least brought this up because I'm working on a project for a client right now where they literally asked for something funny and it didn't really fit with the brand. Um, I'm feeling that something a lot more heartfelt would really stand out and really have a bigger impact rather than just, oh, hey, that's a nice TikTok video. Right. It's like, okay, what does that, what do you want that TikTok video to do? What do you want the viewer to do after seeing that? just giggle and move on? Or do you want them to remember it? Do you want them to take an action? Yeah. So it's creativity with a purpose. It's not just creativity for being creative. Yeah. Well, that's the, you know, like Publix does those Publix commercials and they make you cry. Yes. Yeah. So it can make me cry, make me mad, make me happy. Or uh, make you change the channel sometimes. (laughs) If it's the AS, (laughs) the, um, Sarah McLaughlin comes on. And yes, because yes, it makes you feel guilty. Like, right? oh, I, ar- I already donated half my salary. Come on, guys. <laughs> oh. What more do you want? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the visceral reaction and the fact that, that someone is talking about it, it's a win. Yes. It's a yeah. win. Like we'd, we and did we one know logo. what it is. Yeah, we did a logo for one company and there was this like extra space on the logo. Like there was an extra, it looked like it was off balance. Hmm. And we did it intentionally. And so the, and the client, now the client didn't choose the logo. Yeah. They're like, well, why did you do that? And we're like, which logo of these have you talked the most about? They're like, that one. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, getting into that. So when you don't share it, because I, you know, I envy you, honestly, because I come up with like, when I talk with clients and we do the strategy piece, I have to hand it off to somebody like you or your team to come up with, like what's the cool thing so what is there a process for you you know do you like go through well, and filter these things to come up with what's going to be the you know potential way to approach it or is it just because that's how your brain works oh well, no man is is an island unto himself like i need your how your brain works to make sure the stuff that my stuff that my brain works <laughs> stuff that comes out of my brain will actually work right um now it's if i'm stuck I'll, I'll get on the internet, I'll get on the thesaurus, I'll get on dictionary, I'll watch more creative, I'll look at other stuff in the industry, I'll look at what's bad, see, like, um, see what will stand out. Sometimes it's as simple as uh, a play on the name. Yeah, right. <laughs> Just making something funny out of it or memorable out of it. And sometimes it's more like, um, well, I, I, I say my empathy is my superpower like I have, I have an ability to step in someone else's shoes and see what's going to appeal to them okay um and if i don't then i take steps to be able to 
empathize with that person or that target audience. Like when I had a golf client, I took up golf because I had never held a club in my life. And were you good at golf? No, I'm, I'm still not good at golf. At golf. Yeah. I no. lived on the third tee of a golf and, and we, we belonged to the club and I'd go play and it'd be like four of us, so me and a guest and then they'd always pair us with somebody. And about halfway through the game, they'd always look at us and be like, so who's the member? And I'd be like, that'd be me. <laughs> And I'm okay with the fact that I'm terrible. So yes, but you took up golf, yes. <laughs> yeah, and actually I enjoy it a lot more now because then I thought about it as work. Uh, I was like, uh, I have to get good, this is part of my job, I have to understand these, uh, these golfers to really understand what they tick, what motivates them, um, because that was something I was never familiar with. Now, now I know a lot about golfers, I know a lot of golfers, my brother-in-law is the most amazing golfer I've ever golfed with, and uh, I slow them down. <laughs> yes. So back to our topic about creativity. So if you, if you think about, you know, going in and talking with a company and, and one of their big fears of engaging an agency is that the agency is going to come in and it's like, oh, you guys, you just always come in and you want to change our brand and you want to change our website. And, you know, there's almost a little bit of that, um, you know, the, uh, it's a fear of the fact that the agency is going to want to come in and change everything how do you make the decision about if and when someone needs to make a change from a creative perspective? Is there always a creative slant to it? Well, there's always something creative that like that you can do from the standpoint of just changing to make it work better. And that's why they bring in somebody else is because they can't see it from the inside mm -hmm. and they know they need to change something or they don't have the bandwidth or they need somebody creative and they might think that they need to uh, you know come up with this big beautiful campaign and spend a ton of money but then an agency like us would look at their Cynthia goes in there and saying like well you're getting all this traffic you're just not closing the deals right so so finding out where the broken where the break is and and then fix that break then make your stuff less boring then those build on each other and you have an explosion. Yeah, and, and that's an important point. You can do something incredibly interesting mm -hmm. and drive a lot of traffic and drive absolutely no conversion. Yeah. So it was a, a really cool idea. I wanted to see your funny video. I wanted to, you know, hear, see everybody's, do, it's the viral thing, you know, that's going on at that point. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't maybe get you brand awareness if it's done right, but most of the, but it may not convert at all. It may not be the thing that actually convinces that customer to go ahead and make the, the, to take the next step. Well, and then you have to understand that it's, it's a partnership between the business and the agency in the way that you don't have control over their, of what they do their, with their business. Like, uh, I launched this restaurant, gorgeous, like my favorite brand I've ever created from scratch, just the entire like brand package I did for them. Um, interior where we worked with the architect to make sure that they went hand in hand with the brand and the space and that flagship um, store that location was great but when they opened up another location when we're like that is a terrible idea don't do that and they opened up the second location that was just bleeding money from the first one and the and the whole company goes down the tubes and you're like oh yeah. come on this could have been so cool <laughs> well, were, was it a different creative approach or was it that they were just trying to expand too quickly they were trying to expand too quickly into an over uh saturated area mm. and uh yeah they, it was just bad no matter no no amount of creative will fix that yes and well yeah it was a bad business decision got it yeah, yeah. okay even though all their creative was strong their food was good. Um, uh, the architecture was fantastic. It's just, if you're spending way too much on rent and you're not making any sales, you're still not gonna, you're still, you're still not gonna succeed. Yeah, makes yeah. sense. Well, we're gonna go to a commercial break. So I'm talking to Craig Slyke. He is the Director of Creative Strategy at Liger Partners. You're listening to The Claw. I'm Eric Holtzclaw. I am the managing director something, partner of vision, I don't know, strategist. So we'll be back in just a second. Thanks so much for watching the Claw Podcast. We'll be back after this short break. Hi, we're 
like your partners, we save the world from boring, broken marketing from our headquarters in Atlanta. We are so grateful to be a finalist for Agency of the Year at the TAG Marketing Awards. This is going to be held March 2nd through March 3rd. If you're interested in attending this event, use the code below. We hope to see you there. And we're back. You're listening to The Claw coming to you from Liger Studios. I'm Eric Holtz Claw, Chief, Chief Visionary Partner, and I'm talking to Craig Slyke. He is our Director of Creative Strategy. We're talking about the ROI of creativity. So if you're in the middle of you know rethinking your company, you know, often when companies come to us, they tell us, they say, hey, something's broken. Yeah, I mean, that, why, why, are they, why else would they be coming to us, right? Yeah. We're not getting enough leads. You know, we are changing the company, we're doing some acquisition. So we work a lot with companies where they're acquiring different companies, um, you know, and they come to us to kind of look at it. And in that, that's an interesting one to talk about. So if I'm in the middle of, you know, maybe changing out my company, so I'm either gonna buy another company, I'm gonna rebrand it. As I start to think about how that's structured, does it make sense to have, you know, one dominant brand? Does it make sense to have multiple brands underneath the larger brand? Like, how do you make the decision about how to divide that out? It depends on if they're um, different enough to need another brand. Okay. Um, I prefer to, you know, if we can have the same amount of dollars, focus on one. Um, it like, say, Carl's Jr. and Hardee's. So they are two different places, the exact same restaurant, in one side of the country, they're Carl's Jr. The other side of the country, they're Hardee's. Really? Yes. Exact, I had no idea that. Okay. Exact same I learned something every time company, this, same yeah. logo. Um, and they tried to combine them. And people on the East Coast didn't like Carl's Jr. And people on the West Coast didn't like Hardee's. The name changed because they were both so well established uh -huh. um, that they keep them separate. So in that case, even though all of your brain says combine these two, um, the public has resisted it. Yeah. Now, if you're working with a company that does this one thing and they're, oh, but I also do this, like that would, like a, like a construction company that also does plumbing, that would be a sub brand of that same company because you can put all your marketing dollars into the name recognition of the parent company and save money on, on not doing the same thing for the sub brand. Got it. So it's a concentration of both effort and dollars to make sure you're getting enough of the, cause it takes 21 times for someone to see a brand to start yeah. even establishing awareness. And if you're splitting it up too much, then you're then not. Then that's 42 and uh, then yeah. 60. S sounds like math. Eight, then more math. More multiplication. Stuff and numbers. Yeah. I'm the, I'm the pretty colors guy. <laughs> 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 well, and then as you start to, you know, talk about rolling that out across the organization, you know, making sure that the brand ends up, we'll see people put things into the marketing mix, but then they don't put it in their sales deck and they're not presenting it across other parts of the properties and everything needs to work together. Yeah. I mean, that's the, that's a misnomer I think of today where marketing used to be in this nice little box. And the job was to convert and get people in the door, get them to consider, you know, talking to somebody from a sales perspective. But marketing touches every part of the company, all the way down to the customer support experience. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you buy something and then your customer support experience is not like what you expected, then you're going to, you know, have a bad taste in your mouth, maybe stop using the product or service, certainly not recommend it. To someone yeah. else. Everybody in the organization is a salesperson. Everybody in the organization is a face of the company. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, as you're thinking about the coming up with sort of what you're going to do for a company, so you know they've they've come to you. They've said they want to rebrand or they want to think about a, a, a campaign. Like, what are the things you need to know? What do you need to know in order to kind of get that process started? Um, I need to know what they're currently doing. I need to know. Uh, what they would like to be doing. It's in very important to set goals because if you don't have goals, you don't know if you've succeeded. And if someone doesn't know what they want, then you're never gonna, you're never gonna get to where they want to be because they don't know where they want to be. 
Yeah, I think you've told me that there's some words that people use that can be yeah, a little um, vague when it comes to yeah, the and the the vague catchphrases that you hear like on HGTV. <laughs> and say, can you just make this pop? Yeah, it's like okay, that means something to me, but what does that mean to you? Like, uh, okay, I'm a big fan of San Diego Mexican food, and. Vanessa said, I, I could really go for a California burrito. I'm like, okay, well, what does that mean to you? Because most people in the country say, oh, it must have avocado on it. California burrito has fries in it. It's carne asada and fries. It's oh. in a big flour tortilla. That's the size of your forearm at least. That sounds actually <laughs> delicious. It is delicious, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's your steak and potatoes in a burrito with salsa, um, yeah, and guacamole, oh, maybe, wow. maybe some uh, sour cream, oh, some wow. it's crema. Yeah, it's it's amazing. So like, definitely no beans, no rice. Yeah. yeah, you have to define what your goal is, what you're saying. So you're saying the same language, you're saying the same thing. You have to, because problems arise when um, expectations differ. So you're saying make it pop. I popped a balloon. It pop when you <laughs> but meant, it's not here anymore. Yeah. Right. Or if you say you make it pop and I use bright colors and you're like, Oh, I didn't want colors. I, right. I wanted black and white. Mm -hmm. I wanted high contrast. Uh, so yeah. So getting to that, cause we use words, but the words mean something different in people's heads. Like exactly. we, watching HGTV, our favorite is when they say the word entertain. Everybody says, <laughs> in fact, we like always do a high five. It's like, Oh, they said, they said entertain. We need a place to entertain. Everybody wants to entertain. I love it when they when they go out onto a balcony and they said, "Oh, you can have your coffee out here." <laughs> Every time, <laughs> I'm gonna have my coffee out here. They play HGTV bingo, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's something we need to do. HGTV, HGTV bingo. HGTV bingo. Yeah, yeah. I put together bingo cards for Comic Con. Uh -huh. So you download it. You mark off if you see like a stormtrooper, Darth Vader, or. Uh, Leia, or I, I don't know. It's, they weren't all Star Wars. <laughs> Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> See people cosplaying in those things. Yeah, well, and one of the things you talked about earlier that is a really important point, and, and my my super strength of the thing I like to do in the creative world is write. I, I love to write. I like kind of short to long form writing, so I'm not, I don't do social media posts really. I mean, I can, but not my favorite thing. Um, I like, you know, blog to book somewhere in that category see and i like headlines i like uh, headlines i like social media yeah. i like taglines and names like short punchy like uh like a sucker punch in the face yeah and so you, <laughs> you were talking about how that creative process and for me writing comes from reading so the more i read the more i consume things that have been written by others the more inspired i am to write and the better i think i know my writing is mm -hmm. so in that creative category you know cons you and you and i do a lot of shared pop culture conversations oh, yeah. anyway <laughs> yeah i well the thing is i love reading i just i never get enough of it um i never get enough time to do it because right. by the time it's end of the day when i lay down to read i fall asleep mm -hmm. <laughs> but but i love reading and when i read i'll read more mm -hmm. if i finally like sit down I, I'll tear through a book I want to grab another one until something stops me then I find it hard to start up again but uh, I'm a big consumer of pop culture um, I'm the guy who likes the commercials just as much as the Super Bowl if not more even though I like football I played football I do football fantasy football but being an advertising I'm more interested in the creative yeah yeah and uh, and yet I pay attention to the commercials. I pay attention to um, the memes that are out there, what's going on in the world, the uh, um, current. Uh, I've always been interested in current events. Now I've gotten an unhealthy fascination with politics. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> I can turn that off. <laughs> yeah, I, I have lately. <laughs> yeah, since, turn, turn that off. Since, um, what, January 7th, I turned it all off. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the day. Uh, um, the former president got thrown off off Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so if you're um, thinking about, you know, in some cases the you know the CEO of a company will come to you 
potentially, and you're in the middle of this creative process, and they may give you a set of competitors, or they show you a, a campaign or something that they like. Like, does that help, or is it that helps a lot? The more information, the better. I like to know what you like, what caught your eye, and I especially like to know what you don't like. Yeah. And but not just that you don't like it. I would really like to someone to specify why they didn't like it. Why is it um, hitting you the wrong way? Yeah. Because like you're really selling to not just their target audience, you're selling to the company as well. Like this is a representation of their company. They have to like it. They yeah. have to buy into it. They have to be authentic about it. And if you're saying this is what you need even though you don't like it, that's they're not they're not gonna be authentic. They're not gonna be able to sell it. Yeah. Yeah, very yeah, because if they don't own it at the end of the day, then yeah. it's and it's gonna be short lived. Yeah, and then rolling it out internally, making sure that the the company gets behind it. Because if it's yeah. just something that the executives came up with in some retreat one day, and uh, why are they doing this? You know, why are they why did they decide to change the name of the company, or what's wrong? Well, how did we come up with this logo? There, you don't get the buy-in. No. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then and then you got people like your team is confused. Your team doesn't know. Um, well, why things are happening or the reason why or, or when somebody asks them why do you that I don't know yeah. like those those guys are crazy they never talk to me I don't know <laughs> and yeah, it, that's just a thing that happened from corporate and I don't yeah know. those well, corporate guys don't know what they're doing <laughs> well one of my favorite exercises that we do that really informs kind of the creative process at least for me and I think so for you too is we have the card short exercise it's my favorite yeah so we go through and have people kind of force choice between words that are closely different you know, mm -hmm. sometimes they are just enough to make you like, I don't know, right? But like one might be simple versus complex. Like those two words seem very much opposite. And we love to hear more about why they're sorting it that way yeah. than really how they sort it. I mean, the sort is important and we do want to know what kind of those key words are, but it's having those people kind of argue about why they think they're one word versus the next gets you to the, I think, the fun stuff. I think that you just gave me a great idea for a team building exercise for the creative team. We all take a card sorting deck, we do our own personalities in the card sorting deck, and then we talk about it. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, because that gets you to make people explain something like, you know, you said uh, pop, right? Yeah. The word I always hear is clean. I want it yeah. to be clean. Or, or simple, or simple. make it look like apple. <laughs> Everybody wants to look like Apple. <laughs> yeah. Everybody wants, and then you run an Apple advertisement, and then you're fine, right? Yeah. Like, if you have that much money, then almost any marketing yeah. firm should be able to do something for you at that point, right? Or make it minimalist. Yeah. That's maximalist. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. All right. Well, thanks so much for spending time with me on the, the claw. So uh, always a pleasure. Yeah. If you ever need me back, you know where to find I me. Do you know can, where to find you. Your people can contact my people because they're the same people. <laughs> <laughs> Stick us back in the room together. So yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so well, you've been listening to the claw. I'm Eric Holt Scott, Chief Visionary Partner at Liger Partners, and until next time. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Claw Podcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe, rate and review this podcast. And if you or someone you know wants to make an appearance on this show, email us at yourbestie at ligerpartners.com.